Well, traders, um, as you can see here, my account, I'm up almost 10 grand. And that means I'm doing quite well for uh, what happened today. But I'm not really sure I did use everything in my power to make enough money. Of, well, of course, it was very hard to see what's coming next. This is becoming a very interesting day. Let me go shortly over what we've seen today. We've seen the market gapping up, the S&P 500 gapping up 1%. And look at how quickly it came down, almost closed the gap, came up a bit, came down again and continues. So we started up 1%, currently we're down 0.3%. The interesting thing is that the Nasdaq started with the gap down and continued down. So that was more like a gap and go with the Nasdaq. Very interesting because it's down 1.7%. S&P just down a bit, Nasdaq is down quite a bit. So. The only logical thing to do today was to short. As you can see, I've got um, four winners, Facebook, ZM, Keys and Boeing, all short, all short. It was quite easy to watch the market today and anticipate the move. That's why I was short. But I also have two losers, which I would like to discuss. I only like to discuss my losers. Uh, that, th these ones should be more interesting, in fact. So you can see that I've got a loser in mRNA and a loser in Roku. And in fact, in mRNA, it was also like uh, four grand earlier, but uh, second trade in mRNA was green. So end result in mRNA is just small, relatively small losing trade. So let me go through mRNA and uh, Roku here real fast. Uh, so just that uh, we understand what happened there. Well, mRNA was under a lot of pressure. Right now it's down like 16%, started down like 10%. When you, when you have a stock down 10%, you expect it to gap and go. So, strange enough, mRNA moved higher. I was looking for my first trade to short it, did not work out. It moved to a new high and my first trade failed. So, you see the idea when you have a stock that is starting down 10%, you look for a gap and go. It's more likely to gap and go. It's not likely to continue higher. You look for the point where you short it. But the problem is just timing. You're, you, 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 you're very likely to succeed sometime and, and Scott in his trade shorting it at under 52 and I joined it like 50 cents later. That was my second trade, the way it came down. Uh, that. That was my second good trade in mRNA that worked out. But my first trial in mRNA failed. So you look at mRNA, you look at the beautiful technical formation to go long, and you never ever do that because the stock is down 10%. It's more likely to come down. And it did come down after all. So it doesn't matter if you take a look later and you see, well, it moved up one and a half points. I could have made a lot of money on the long trade in mRNA, Right? But you never do that because technically speaking, the stock should come down. Now, it came down quite a bit from uh, $53 all the way down to $46. The question is when. You never know when. It's all about timing. If you would have gone long here, it could have stopped just 20 cents higher and come down several points. You just don't know where it's going to come down. So the thing is, just don't do it. When stock is down 10%, you, you really need a very, very good reason to go long. Maybe the market is now shooting higher, which did not happen. The market came down. So you did not even have the excuse of market direction. And mRNA so moved higher, as expected, failed. We had a nice short, a second short. My first one didn't, fail, didn't work. So you know, again, you may be right, you, I was right, but I did not have the right timing. That's it. Sometimes it's just a matter of timing. But I did short another uh, four uh, fantastic trades today, which worked out right. So, you know, when, when you're technically right, four out of six worked out fine. That's the whole idea about trading. You, you never promise to succeed because sometimes you've got things which are out of the ordinary and you just get a loser like an mRNA. Yes, we've got the second one right and we made some money, although it did not cover my first trade. Now, the same thing happened with Roku. Roku started with a small gap down. I liked Roku because of the daily. We're soon going to take a look at the daily. You can already take a look at your charts. But Roku worked out 
fine, it came down, but it took me out because it moved higher. I posted it for a short under 107. Uh, it was supposed to come down. It did come down a bit, and then it moved higher, took me out, and then continued to move higher, and then came down with the market. Now, again, this isn't something that usually happens. Usually, stock should follow the market, especially when, you have, when it has a daily of Roku. So, again, I was right. Roku did come down, but it's just the way trading works. You never know. You really never know. Uh, when if you got the right timing, that's it. You just don't know if you got the right timing. So now let's take a look at Roku's daily. Look at the way Roku behaves. Roku came down. First daily breakdown was right here at one twelve seventy or so. That wasn't today. And then it came down under that breakdown. Beautiful, a beautiful um, bear flag formation of three candles here. And then came today. When I was watching Roku pre-market time, I knew I'm going to have a trade in that, in this one. I did not know I'm going to have a loser, but I did know I'm going to have a trade. And look at this beautiful technical formation. Now, why did it fail? Who were the buyers who took it up? Uh, what happened there? No idea. I know I had a loser. I moved out. That's why we have a stop, stop loss. We never keep holding and hoping that it's going to come down. But if you take enough trades, like I took six trades today. Well, four of them worked out. In fact, five worked out my second trade in mRNA. So I've got really five winners and two losers. That's a good average. You can't expect much more than that in trading. So I'm really happy with my trading day. I do have the feeling, look at the market now. Amazing. New lows, both sides. I do have a feeling that I did not make enough for the market conditions. I mean, the way the market came down today, I could possibly make some more. But it was very hard to anticipate that the market is going to continue as much as it did. Uh, we are in times where the market is moving higher. I cannot really explain why. I mean, you look at the daily of the Nasdaq, it looks like it's quite impossible. I mean, uh, so many people are unemployed and the Nasdaq is just like, like is moved up like yesterday. It was touching um, approximately 2% from all, <laughs> from all time highs, really, like seriously. So, but you know, you, you, I, I couldn't expect it's going to come down today, but it just doesn't sound, sound real like it's going to move to a new high. but you never know, never know. That's why we trade the market as it comes and we never know what's coming next. Just we take what we find, what we see in front of us. That's what we do as traders. So I really want to thank you today for being with me today. Um, certainly hope you had um, a green day just like I did. Um, I really enjoyed my trading session today. And um, thank you. Thank you again for being with me. So if you are on YouTube, if you don't mind giving us a thumb up, that would be highly appreciated. And um, I see you all traders tomorrow. Have fun. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. The material was taken from The Market Whisperer, my Amazon best-selling book. This essential guide to stock trading is ideal for those with no background or experience in stock trading. Click here to read the 200 page part one of this book absolutely free. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.